Hello, everyone. Welcome to my stream. Uh, so uh, for those of you who may have noticed last week, I did a live stream, uh, but I did not know that Twitch actually, uh, by default, has the setting to save your streams turned off, uh, which wasn't so useful. So uh, yeah, it's the case of the disappearing live stream last week. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to just pretend that this is the first stream, uh, even though technically it's not. And, uh, yeah, so today I had a request actually, uh, from my YouTube channel, uh, on how to hatch a baby dragon from an egg, uh, which <laughs> was a very specific, uh, request, but hey, uh, I thought it would be fun to put together. Um, I'm also kind of toying with uh, a dragon game. Uh, hey, Charlie Yates, how are you doing? Uh, thank you for requesting the tutorial. <laughs> so just getting started here. And uh, just giving it a little minute uh, for anybody else to join, if anybody is joining us. Uh, hey, Flutter Girl, how are you doing? Awesome. I can't see how many people are in chat i can just see when people actually message so thank you everyone for the support um and yeah so uh let's just get right into it uh so i i did a couple of things um carly was trying to send me uh his specific content uh that they're trying to use to to do the dragon hatching uh, unfortunately there were some issues uh with getting the file sent over so no worries there we're just going to do everything from scratch uh but i was looking on the unreal marketplace and uh i preemptively installed uh a couple of uh free content packs uh so if i just do a search uh, actually dragons i believe and then uh, sort from price low to high, uh, there was actually a dragon uh, model, Four Evil Dragons by Dungeon Mason. And this is fantastic. Chubby Guy is my favorite, so that's the one we're using today. Uh, so shout out to Dungeon Mason for including some free content for people to use. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't really able to find a useful Dragon Age uh, Dragon Age, Dragon Egg, uh, getting my <laughs> merds wixed up. Uh, so we're going to just uh, start by creating that inside 3D Studio Max. Uh, so this should be really simple. Now, again, uh, apologies to anyone who doesn't use 3D Studio Max. It's the only software I know. Uh, most of the modeling techniques here would be applicable to any software. Uh, so you shouldn't have to worry there. And uh, yeah, maybe, again, I'm not 100% certain how Twitch works. I was going to say maybe I can uh, put a download link to the egg uh, mesh once we finish making it uh, for anybody who doesn't want to uh, have to create their own. But all right, so uh, we're going to start just by creating a simple cube. So I'm going to do it, uh, let's do four by four. And so it's 40, 40, and 40. And then we're going to increase these segments to 8, uh, 8, and 8. That gets us a, a bit of a subdivided uh, mesh here. Then we are going to throw a spherify. Uh, that will turn it into a rough sphere. And then we're going to go with... Uh, FD box and just right click on all of these rollouts to give us two. Uh, select our control points and we're going to drag this up. And I like to work with snapping on just so everything stays, uh, you know, snap to the grid. That's my uh, level design <laughs> habits showing through there. It's kind of unnecessary for an egg model, but uh, whatever. Old habits die hard. So there we go. We have an egg and uh, let's do a turbo smooth on top of that. 
So it's a little bit higher poly. So I am going to convert that to an editable poly now and jump into full screen. So uh, essentially what I'm thinking is, uh, yeah, this actually would be similar techniques in Blender. Uh, thank you, uh, Emaxon. I'm going to assume that's how you say your name. Uh, anyways, yeah, um, any software, any 3D software you use, uh, you probably won't have the same uh, functionality like uh, sphere of, uh, sphere of, sphere of uh, if I could speak. Um, and you won't have FFD box, uh, but you're going to have similar uh, ways of modifying the geometry. And uh, so, yeah, uh, regardless of whether it's Blender or 3D Studio Max or Maya or whatever software you use, you should be able to uh, use similar techniques anyway. So I'm not exactly sure of the specific buttons in Blender, though. Uh, probably I should start learning Blender, actually. But I'm an old man, and I don't like learning new tricks. So, okay. Uh, so once we've got the shape of our egg, uh, what I'm thinking is... Uh, essentially, we want the dragon to spawn inside of this egg, and then the egg is going to break open, and uh, the dragon's going to come out. Uh, well, I'm not going to work on animating it coming out, but y you'll see. Anyways, uh, so uh, the easiest thing in my mind, uh, easiest way to do this is actually uh, to just create a static mesh and... Uh, Rather than animating the egg cracking open, we're just going to uh, kind of explode it open. Uh, and so as such, we're modeling this egg to be uh, fracturable, if that's a word. Uh, so anyways, so inside of uh, 3D Studio Max, you have this awesome little uh, spray can uh, selection option. And uh, in editable poly mode with polygon selected, and we want to ignore back faces. So where is that? There we go. Ignore back facing. So that means uh, when I hit Q here for select, you can paint uh, by left click and holding. You can paint a region. And by ignore back facing, it means we're not going to get uh, faces in the back. So if we turn ignore back facing off as I select here, you're going to see that it's also selecting random uh, faces behind the mouse cursor, which is what we don't want. And uh, sorry, I got people <laughs> messaging me on Steam too. I was uh, telling everybody that I was uh, doing my first live stream today. So, uh, so yeah, with uh, the paint selection, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to randomly select some sections that would look like broken off shell pieces here. Now this isn't going to be, you know, super awesome in terms of detail. It's going to look a little uh, cubed, uh, but that's okay. It gets the general point across. Uh, later you could go in and, you know, spend more time with your model to make it uh, look more like a cracked egg. Give these, uh, you know, squares uh, some sharper edges. You could probably even triangulate it and it might help uh, triangulating the mesh. But I'm not going to uh, bother doing that. So we're just selecting random uh, painted out parts here and uh, detaching them. Uh, the name doesn't matter. And then every time I detach, I'm just going to isolate selection so I can see, uh, you know, my egg and how it's looking, my eggshell. And then I get to grab another selection over here. Sure, that looks good. Detach. Okay. Isolate selection. Ooh, I did that so fast. <laughs> I didn't even see it happen. Uh, and then, whoops, 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 whoops. That's why we went out of poly mode. So let's see here. Get some up there. Cure. Detach. Okay. Why is my right click menu going weird? Very odd. Anyways, uh, so essentially, we're just picking out pieces of uh, the eggshell to break off here and to give it the effect that the 
baby dragon is going to be coming out of this shell. Let's do that. And I like having a little bit longer there. All right. Isolate selection. So that's getting fairly good. Let's grab this part here. Yeah, that'll look good. Detach and isolate. And sorry, guys, this is a slow part. <laughs> I'm trying to work as quickly as I can here, but uh, sometimes game design just takes ages. So, all right, so that's starting to look pretty good. Now, depending on how we want this, do we want the egg to completely shatter? Uh, Charlie, what do you think? Do you want the egg to just completely shatter? Charlie sent me a reference video on YouTube of what he wanted to actually look. Or do you want to uh, leave some of the, the egg shell behind? Probably it's easier if you have it completely shatter, but... Uh, If you had a good animation, all right, up to me. If you had a good animation, you could, you can, uh, you know, show them stepping out of the egg. But probably uh, this is getting into way too much detail for what we're putting together. All right, so now that I've got all of my egg pieces there, I'm going to select them all, and uh, we're going to do a shell. Uh, again, this is something you can do in Blender. I know you can do it. I just don't. Uh, know the specific buttons. So by default, you'll see uh, that it's pushing outwards and you're going to get these uh, cracks in between uh, your shell sections. So we actually want to do an inner amount. And I'm going to go for 0.25 centimeters. And now uh, that we've added a shell, we can, let's do hide selection. So you can see that there's, uh, you know, a bit of an edge here to our egg. So that's great. Now we're going to go unhide all. And uh, let's convert that to little poly, editable poly, uh, not an edible poly. I don't know if they'd taste all that good. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and so something uh, to keep in mind here, you are seeing, uh, you know, the outline of where the egg is uh, cracked. Ideally, uh, you would actually apply, let's see if we can do it this way, edit normals. And then unify. I don't know if this will work with separate geometry, though. But uh, ideally, what you would want to do is you would attach these all together. You would um, smooth out the normals, uh, and then you would break them apart again. Uh, but I'm not going to go into that much detail because we don't really care uh, for this example project. Uh, but that would actually hide all the seams here. You just want to make sure, basically, uh, the shading, if we isolate selection, uh, basically these edges uh, by default they're actually fairly good but you want to make sure your smoothing groups are set up correctly and uh, yeah for the most part they look okay right now but uh, doing a unified normal would would fix that also your texture is going to hide uh, some of those seams all right, uh, so I'm not going to worry too much more than that. So uh, what we are going to do is uh, we're going to select all again, and we're going to go to, uh, is it under tools? Rename objects, and we're going to give it a base name, egg. Uh, let's just call it egg shell. And rename, uh, let's go numbered, base number, zero, rename. Uh, so what this has done is 
It's gone through and we've got an eggshell zero to eight. So that's great. Oh, and look at that. Eggshell zero is actually the main horror. That was a nice fluke. Uh, so we're going to undo or isolate there. Always save your work. We're going to go into Max and I'm going to call this uh, Witch. And we're going to call this Egg Shell. Save File, Export. Well, let's just throw it on the desktop. The folder of Twitch. And uh, Baby Dragon. There we go. And we're just going to call this Egg Shell. Uh, save. And, uh, of course, your FBX settings, you'll want to make sure they're correct. Uh, we're doing smoothing groups. We're not including animation, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and I also, where is it? Uh, embed media. I turn this off. Uh, so the embed media actually allows uh, materials, basically, to be sent uh, from 3D Studio Max or Blender over to Unreal, uh, and it can import everything in one click. Uh, that actually drives me nuts. I hate it. I like more fine-tuned control. Um, all right, so uh, back to Unreal. So when you search for the dragons and uh, price low to high, you've got the four evil dragons here, uh, so you can download that. And then also, um, what was it called? Temperate. And these, uh, so the four dragons are free right now. I'm not sure if they're permanently free, uh, but the temperate is uh, permanently free. Uh, so I got uh, temperate vegetation, wild berries, uh, and then I think I added the spruce forest here. Uh, to our project and I created a project I uh, just called it baby dragon it is using uh, 4.26 uh, so the latest version of the engine uh, anything that I'm going to show you how to do would probably work in any version of Unreal that you're using uh, so you don't have to worry about it being engine specific um, yeah and then uh, so this is our content here we've got our four evil dragons uh, we got the spruce forest we got the wild berries and then I added starter content just for uh, some materials uh, and then uh, I just did a new level using the time of day and uh, this is where we dive right into it so first two things I like to do actually let's say first four things I like to do is delete all that extra clutter and we're going to go into a landscape and uh, we don't need a very big one let's just create it with the default settings <clears throat> and uh, oh actually did that wrong because what we want to do go back into select mode with 4.26, uh, they have the new land mass, which is freaking awesome. Uh, so you want to make sure you enable this edit layers. So if you enable edit layers, it uh, allows you to actually use land mass and you'll get a blueprints uh, toolbar. So we're going to create again. Now you see the blueprint shows up here. Uh, so if we go over to blueprint, and uh where is it here oh did we have to turn it on in plugins i think we do landmass enable yes water enable yes restart now uh let's not save that sorry guys bear with me didn't uh do everything preemptively but uh, it's good information to have. So the landmass uh, plugin, if you guys haven't played with it yet, is absolutely amazing. Uh, it allows you to create landscapes uh, or terrains just completely non-destructively, uh, which is super awesome. 
So back in here, selecting all this extra garbage and deleting it. Going back to our modes, landscape mode, enable edit layers and create. And then when we choose blueprint uh, and we go into this drop down, yeah, now we can see that we've got uh, some custom brushes here. So we're going to start with custom brush landmass. And then you just uh, left click anywhere in your viewport. And uh, it's a spline based editor. Normally I'm used to working with uh, multiple monitors. This is a uh, little tight space constraints. Unfortunately, uh, OBS doesn't have an option to, um, to do two monitors uh, and switching between them uh, like I'm used to with uh, my YouTube tutorials. So we're going to have to suffer with a uh, lack of real estate here. Um, but, 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 let's get some. So if you go into list of effects, curl noise, let's uh, throw that up. Curl strength. It's just going to give us some random mountains going here. Curl tiling. Well, that looks good for now. Uh, and then the nice thing is you can actually just uh, click on your custom brush and then uh, just holding, whoops, no, not alt, holding, yeah, I thought it was alt. Uh, oh, you know what? It's because I have to click off it and click back on it. That way I'm not selecting uh, the individual splines. So you can actually duplicate uh, your landmass brushes rotate them around and you can see that they actually like intersect with each other and uh, if you're used to the original terrain editing this isn't possible <laughs> uh, the uh, landscape always is additive so multiplies on top of each other so we're just going to throw some mountains in there uh, then we're going to go back to sculpting and we're going to get some noise and we're going to turn the size of our brush up to max and the tool strength down to 0.01 because for some reason the noise is insanely strong. And let's see if I can, oops, no, I can't. I was trying to maximize it. So let's just quickly left click and add a little bit of variation to our terrain and then go back to blueprint and let's see that one looks like it's all in the positive this one looks like it's oops these ones are uh, let's turn up my camera speed here these ones are going down in the terrain a little bit so let's just lift them up and that one lift that up as well and we're not subtracting all right so now we have you know a somewhat useful terrain uh let's go to the foliage tool and we are going to assume that the spruce forest has a foliage type in it. Let's filter by a foliage. Let's just tick all those on. Really? No? None? Darn. You think they'd make our lives easy with their free content? <laughs> all right. So let's uh, find our meshes and let's go with full. Uh, let's go with low. We don't need high poly ones. So we're just going to drag a couple of these in here. We're going to select them all, modify the settings here. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is look for, where is the culling, cull distance? Uh, let's go 24,000. 
And then we're going to do density. Probably we don't need the density that high. Uh, radius, you can get a bit of spacing. So let's do 138. Uh, I like to do uneven numbers, like not 150 or 100. Uh, I don't know why. I think it just uh, gives a bit more randomization to the spacing. And then uh, scaling uniform minimum. Let's go with 0.8 and maximum uh, 1.3. And where is the size of our brush again? Da, 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 da. Paint settings, brush size. Here we go. There we go. So let's, yeah, that's looking okay. Why is that not working? Oh, it is. <laughs> Our culling distance. Oh, and uh, so something we want to turn off here. That's great for grass, not so great for trees, is you don't want the random yaw, I believe. No. Uh, oh, yeah. Don't want align to normal for trees because that looks weird. But random yaw is fine. Because uh, that's spinning them. All right. We're going to make a basic semblance of a scene here. All right. That looks okay. Uh, and then I'm going to go back into modes. Let's see, do we have a landscape material? Because I certainly don't want to bother going into that. We don't. Uh, so the landscape stays gray. <laughs> Hurrah. Or maybe, maybe, just maybe, I will do, uh, let's go, baby dragon. And we're just going to go new material. Landscape simple mat. Uh, is the plugin free? Which plugin are you speaking about, Charlie? Sorry, I uh, disappeared into my design there, and I didn't. Uh, I didn't catch the chat. Hey, Gruntled, how you doing? Thanks for joining. <laughs> <laughs> so we are, uh, for those of you who are just joining us, we are uh, working on a uh, requested tutorial for how to hatch a baby dragon uh, from an egg. Now, uh, of course, as I am want to do, I am uh, taking this way too far and I'm creating an entire environment for our dragon to exist in uh, before getting into <laughs> the guts of the tutorial. Um, also just stalling for a little bit of time here to let anybody else join. Uh, so I'm just going to create a simple color. And uh, we're going to give this a brownish uh, color to it. Let's go with that. Maybe a little bit more red. Plug this into our base. Take, hold down S for a parameter. Roughness. Give this a default value of 0.7. Plug that into roughness. Save. This is going to be our BS landscape material. Actually, let's create a material instance. And let's go back into the master and convert this to a parameter and call it... Uh, Color, save. Oh yeah, uh, so the landscape plugin is uh, part of Unreal Engine. So uh, the reason you have to turn it on uh, as a plugin is because uh, it's still in beta. So uh, it's official. It's a, an official plugin by Epic, and. Um, yeah, it's freaking spectacular. So it's uh, freely available to everyone. And uh, yeah, 
it's just not not in its official state yet so uh, they're not enabling it by default all right uh, so now let's adjust our color here so let's uh, whoops I wanted to do the opposite of that make this smaller let's do it from this corner so we're not accidentally closing and uh, let's just see if we can tweak this value here and I just realized we're tweaking the value but we haven't applied this one the instance to our landscape oh too much red so pull the red back a little bit oh too much let's go with that what ah there we go it's not very instant anymore is it it's supposed to be real time uh yeah that looks okay it's uh passable <laughs> All right, so I think uh, we're at the point where I've stalled long enough and uh, we can start diving into how to actually uh, handle this. But I'm going to go back into my foliage. 24,000 isn't enough. Uh, so I'm going to reset that down to zero. I'm going to call this uh, 50,000. All right, now, uh, so how are we going to start here? So first thing we are going to want to do is have a play playable character. Uh, so back into select mode. Let's go to add, and we're going to add in a content or feature pack. So I started this as a, a blank uh, project. I always do that. Uh, instead of starting as third person or whatever, uh, just because it gives me more freedom if I want to change my mind part of the way through. And you can always go in and add these uh, features later. So again, uh, adding the content, adding third person, add to project. And what that's going to do, we don't actually need the third person character. Uh, whoops. And if we do that, we need to find our player start. And we need to put him in a position that makes sense so they're not underground. Page, whoops, not page down. Drag it up and hit the end key, and that will snap it to the ground. And then we just raise it up a little bit. So by default, we do not have a mode. So that's the benefit uh, of starting as a third person project is it uh, automatically sets the mode for you but that's an easy fix to map some modes and uh, we're going to do third person game mode. whoa why is it in here three times that's fantastic so we've got ah interactive spruce right third person and then the berries so we're going to go with interactive spruce uh, interactive spruce no we're not we're gonna go with the third person game mode that's actually in uh, the mannequin uh, so we don't want the interactive spruce one we're gonna close that now when we hit play uh, we got our third person character so uh, we're gonna start simply I think by hatching this guy uh, from an egg uh, Charlie and then uh, we'll take it take it further and actually turn it into a, a dragon model, uh, just for simplicity's sake. So uh, we created a folder of our own called Baby Dragon. I probably should have put these in a folder uh, called Materials. So I'm going to do that now. Drag these over. Go move here. And right click and fix up redirectors just in case uh, anything gets botched in the moving and then we're going to create a new folder we're going to call this meshes and we are going to import our beautiful egg mesh uh, where did i put that on the desktop i believe and twitch and baby dragon and eggshell now, uh, a couple of things here that are important. So we're not going to generate our missing collision. And uh, where is it? Under, 
Where are the, why is it not? Ah, here we go. Top one. Expand that. And we want to make sure. Oh, oh, my system. My mouse is freezing. Oh, that was weird. Uh, go hiccups. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're going to make sure that uh, combined meshes is not ticked off. Uh, if it is ticked off, then uh, it'll take all of those FBX meshes that are in the scene and uh, combine them as one, which we don't want. And uh, we are going to scroll down here and make sure that the material is set to do not create material and untick import textures because we don't have any. And then we're going to go import all. Uh, and there we have our egg. Now, if I was smart, what I would have done is before exporting and importing those, I would have selected all and I would have gone over to effect pivot only and I would have zeroed out all of these. Uh, so that way every uh, section of our shell is sharing the same pivot point uh, because if you look at the way that I just imported these, uh, each one, if we put this in the world, and then we drag a shell piece in. Oh, actually, maybe they already were. Yes, they were, because uh, we based this from the, uh, the original same mesh. Uh, so when we separated them, it actually kept all the pivot points. So that's great. So no worries there. I was, uh, whoops, worrying ahead if... Time. I thought I saw them coming in uh, with their own their pivots at uh, the zero, which would make it harder to assemble. But essentially, uh, when we place this in the world and we copy uh, the location, since all of these share the same uh, zero space pivot point, when we paste the position in, uh, the egg will assemble itself. Uh, but we're not going to do that inside the viewport here. I was just uh, trying to make sure that that's working fine. So we're going to delete that. We're going to, to uh, select them all and open them by pressing enter. And then I'm going to minimize that. We're going to go back into our baby dragon. We're going to go into materials and oh, let's see. I am going to open up uh google and i gotta go to a l texture i'm gonna look for let's do texture seamless we're gonna look for something that works it looks like ground kind of probably all gonna look like ground <laughs> Uh, let's see, you know what, I was going to use that, but I think if we take our starter content and just modify it, we probably have a material in here that already exists that we can modify a bit. Um, concrete, that'll be it. So I'm going to duplicate this, I'm going to call this uh, egg. L underscore mat and open that up. And we are going to let's see, we're just going to take the base color and we're going to multiply it by uh, a. Uh, C R E N G T H, if I could spell. So we're going to modify uh, this concrete texture. And we're going to say 0.3 here for the texture strength. Uh, so what I did is I held S and left click. Uh, that gives you a parameter. Also, usually names it S, uh, which is a lot of fun. You can rename it there. Uh, so we rename that to texture strength. Uh, we changed the default value to 0.3. This is actually going to allow us 
to uh, tone down the strength of uh, the texture, but then of course uh, it's doing it against a black background. So we're gonna hold three on the keyboard and left click to get a, uh, what do they call it? Vector three uh, node, which I call color or maybe uh, shell color if we wanna get specific. We're going to put this up in the whitish area, maybe add a little bit of yellow. So we're gonna decrease our blue just by a bit. And then we're going to multiply that by our new adjusted strength for the concrete. We're gonna plug that into base color. And then uh, we want to do the same thing with the normal. So we don't want the normal strength. So we're going to hold M for multiply, hold S for a parameter. I call this normal strength. Uh, change this to 0.1. Plug it in there. Take our normal. So I'm control and left clicking to detach the pin. We're going to uh, plug this into another multiply. We are going to get a value of, uh, how do we do this? We do it as two vector, I believe. Uh, we want R and G. And then multiply that in there. And then we're going to do an append vector and just do a constant of one and that should get us our b value back and maybe i didn't do this right let's see plug this into wait uh, hmm, let's go with 0.5 This should give us a, no, uh, what do I want to do? I think what I want to do is constant three. Uh, get rid of the append, so control drag that in there. I haven't done this in a while, so forgive me. It's not on the top of my head at the moment. So let's see if we do texture normal strength one versus 0 0.1, 0 0.3. Yeah, that should work. Uh, if we detach base color, let's see. So we should. Uh, actually, I think we need a blend angle. Is it and normal? Yeah, blend angle corrected normals. I think we need this. That might fix it. There we go. Uh, so if we go normal strength zero, yeah, you see all the bumpiness kind of disappeared. One was the default value, which looks like concrete. And we want to go with probably 0.1. Uh, so it's a little bit rough, although that doesn't look like it's working either. 0 0.01. Uh, you know what? I can't remember how to do uh, modifying the normal strength. I'll worry about that later. Uh, save that and Grunfeld, uh, I didn't even see. I am terrible at looking at chat. Uh, oh, that is a great site. I wonder if they have an egg there. <laughs> Let's see. Do they have an egg material? You can't search though. Uh, plaster probably would have worked. 
Anyways, uh, I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm getting caught up in details that don't matter. This is our new eggshell texture. And uh, probably we can edit these all at the same time, I would imagine, through. If we go into our meshes, go into asset actions, bulk edit, via property matrix. Select all those. Can we assign a material here? Static mesh. Let's search for material. I haven't actually tried this before. Material. Yeah, it looks like you can. So go back to our baby dragon and our materials. Nope. We had that in starter content. Materials, eggshell, and uh, select all these again, and plug this in there, and choose uh, save all. Wait, hold on. Let's uh, close all tabs to the right. Close that one. Go back to our meshes. Yeah, there we go. It did work. So save all and we're going to save our map as well to maps. Call this uh, just test world. Save. All right. So now we have sort of uh, sort of an eggshell. Yeah, that's a dragon egg. Dragons are Hatched out of concrete? I totally believe it. Hey, Thalo! Thank you for joining. Good to see you. Thalo is my nephew, everyone. Uh, he has his own Twitch channel you guys should check out. Uh, Thay, you should post a link to your channel in the chat. Uh, he is fantastic and uh, a lot of fun to watch. So you guys should definitely check him out. Uh, again, so for anybody who is uh, just joining in, uh, I am very slowly uh, working on uh, putting together a tutorial that was requested by Charlie Yates uh, on how to hatch a baby dragon uh, from an egg as your player character. So now that we've got our uh, totally beautiful world here, <laughs> with no texture at all. And uh, we've got our baby dragon egg. We are gonna start getting into the propice, pro propice, propice. Yes, we're totally getting into the propice. The process of uh, actually putting this together in code. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new blueprint and we're gonna call this an actor. We're just gonna call this uh, egg shell. And uh, if you want to, you can go, oh, whoops, no, I'm going to stop that and delete it. And I'm going to create a new folder because that's what I wanted to do first. Organization. Uh, so we're creating a blueprints folder. Then we're going to create a new blueprint class of actor. Call this egg shell underscore BP. Now, uh, epic for some reason, uh, when it comes to the naming convention of all of their assets, they always start with BP underscore or Matt underscore. If you go into the uh, starter content, you look at blueprints. Uh, yeah, blueprint, blueprint, blueprint. To me, that is crazy because it makes everything organized uh, alphabetically under the letter B. And then you can't actually find any of your content once it starts to get uh, larger. Uh, same thing with the materials. If you look at the materials, they're all M underscore something. Uh, so good luck finding your brick versus, you know, your ground. I mean, it is still alphabetical, so you still can find it, but I don't know. Personally, I like sorting it this way. Let's see if you go ground. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe it's a moot point. You can still filter. It's smart enough to get it in the name. Uh, but yeah, I like to name uh, a little bit differently so everything is the actual name and then bp or matt what have you 
uh, I'm just being finicky. So uh, we're going to add a component and we're going to add a scene component. The reason we're doing this, so I'm going to name this root. The default scene uh, component has this sphere that drives me nuts. <laughs> so uh, I add my own, I drag this up and it replaces it and goodbye sphere that we don't need. Um, because I hate it when all of your assets have a sphere attached to them. You only see it in the editor, but I don't know. It just looks weird after you've got your entire scene populated. Uh, so then we're going to do a static mesh. And uh, now that I think about this, we actually probably should have a complete egg mesh to start with. Um, so the reason being is we're not the eggshell. Well, I mean, it depends on how you wanted to do this. If you wanted it to break open slowly, uh, then yeah, maybe we'll do that actually, rather than one giant explosion, maybe we'll have pieces of the eggshell break off since we've already set it up, uh, that way. So I'm going to call this, uh, egg base. And we are going to search for our eggshell zero. And that's going to be our main mesh that we end up with as our final result after it's broken. And then uh, with this selected so that all of the other uh, pieces are children of uh, the egg base, we're going to add more static meshes. We're going to add static mesh. Uh, and just call this zero one, or maybe uh, piece zero one. Let's see if I duplicate this. Yeah, zero two, zero three, zero four. I don't remember how many pieces we had. Uh, egg shell. We have eight, so. Five, six, seven. All right, so piece one, eggshell one. Uh, then I'm going to select that, go over here, paste that in with the uh, arrow key, and then we just drop down to the next piece. So three, right, wait, one, two, three. Oh, they are lining up. Uh, four, bing, there's going to be four, oh, this one is going to be five, this one is going to be six, uh, and this one is going to be a seven, and then I'm going to duplicate that so we have eight pieces and that one's going to be eight. So now we have, we select our root, we have our egg and it's one whole egg. So yeah, actually uh, it did a pretty decent job of hiding the seam. So our, our uh, eggshells, even though we didn't really, uh, because we started this by uh, modeling from a cube, uh, our seams are a little bit obvious. Uh, if you zoom in close, you'll see the texture seams there. So you could actually apply like uh, an unwrap or um, yeah, better better UVs essentially would fix the seams. Uh, but again, not, not too bad. Uh, so now we have our egg uh, shell and we're going to go into our blueprints and we're going to place this in the scene pick it up in the world hit end uh, f to focus on the egg and uh, let's see what the size of that is whoops where's our egg shell f to focus in on there grab our player start uh, actually sorry grab the location of our shell go down to our player start paste this there, and then move it over a little bit and up, just so we're in the same general area when we hit play. Okay, that is a tiny eggshell. 
So if we are uh, doing this to try and get our player character to hatch from the eggshell, we want to find our third person character, throw him in the world. We're going to take our eggshell and we're just going to scale it up so that it would encompass our player. Uh, so that's about five times the size. So I reset the scale there and I'm going to go back to my root. I'm going to set this up to five times. Whoops. I'm going to set it to uniform first and then set it to five times. Compile and save. Uh, and then you'll see that our egg is the correct size. Uh, oh, funny. Oh, yeah, by default it's scaled to five. Well, eh, I could have scaled the models up too, uh, but that's fine. So, uh, that way it's at least coming into the right scale. So, if we were to place our character inside, of course that's not going to work because that's not our character. Haha! <laughs> uh, copy, paste. We're going to have to put that up. Ha <laughs> Well, yeah sort of works it's functional for now anyways so what we are going to do next is uh we are going to let me think about this so firstly our egg shells uh we want to open those up and we want so our egg shell zero we actually want its collision to, under uh, collision complexity, we're going to choose use compact, complex collision as simple. Uh, what that's going to do is if when we look at the collision there, it's actually going to do per poly collision. Uh, so because this is the part that we're kind of standing inside, uh, you want its collision to be as accurate as possible. Uh, for our pieces, and it's not going to be uh, physically simulated. Uh, for our pieces, however, uh, what I'm going to do is close tabs to the right. I'm going to uh, go to collision. We're going to do auto convex collision. Uh, we're going to have it set to its defaults. And uh, we're going to choose Apply. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us an approximated collision that's pretty darn close uh, to the shape of our shell. We're going to hit Save. Uh, the reason I closed all to the right is Unreal is fantastic. When you open all of the different meshes, uh, each one of them, we would have to go back and reopen the auto convex collision settings. Uh, but because I closed them all, and now I go back and open the others, uh, the auto convex tab is already open. So we can just hit apply a bunch of times, and we assume that Unreal knows what it's doing, and it's making these uh, collisions pretty accurate uh, to the shape of the shell piece. And apply, apply, and this is where we get back to game design is slow and sometimes really boring. Uh, but once you see the final results, uh, it's totally awesome and really rewarding. Uh, so yeah. All right. Uh, so now. What we are going to do is we are going to start figuring out our code. So what we want to do is we want to we want to have this egg basically construct itself. Now, um, by default. What am I thinking? So I'm thinking that we could have random pieces of the egg uh, break off in a specific way. 
uh, but probably I'm I'm getting too convoluted again. Uh, probably each time the egg hatches, it doesn't need to be totally unique. So I'm going to scratch that original idea. I was going to actually assemble everything in construction script. And uh, that way, every time, you know, the dinosaur hatches, it's uh, a little bit unique because the different pieces will fall off in a different order. Uh, but again, yeah, that's, that's probably just going into way too much detail. Uh, so you notice I like to delete all of the default uh, pins there. Uh, I'll add them in if I need them. Okay, so what are we going to do? Uh, so probably we want this egg hatching to happen over a specific amount of time. So and that means uh, we probably want a timeline to control this. Uh, but I might change my mind in a minute. So we are going to have uh, eight different pieces to break off. And uh, we are going to want to break them off one at a time. Uh, do we even need a timeline? So basically, uh, simply put, uh, we just want to destroy the component uh, for every one of these egg pieces that breaks. Now, uh, yeah, probably we don't even need it. Probably we don't even need a timeline to control that. Probably we can just do this with some simple delays. If we were doing it uh, in a more complex way, like I was originally thinking, we could use for loops. Uh, and, and so this is part of the fun of game design. It's just, you know, thinking through your logic before you go to put anything together. Uh, but probably we just want to use a begin play. Uh, if you want to have a specific you know, maybe a button. Uh, Charlie, I don't know what what do you what do you want? Do you want uh, the player to push a button to uh, hatch from the egg? Uh, do we? Yeah, I mean, maybe actually that sounds like it could be a good way. Yeah, I, I agree. Actually, now that I think about it, so so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go custom event. And we're gonna call this uh, hatch egg. And uh, so probably when we call the hatch egg event, so probably we want these to cascade. Probably we want them in a random order. Uh, and probably when they break, we probably, instead of destroying component, Probably what we want to do is we want to uh, simulate physics on them. So one thing I'm concerned about, let's see what happens. If we take one of these eggshell pieces and let's scale it up appropriately. Okay. Where is that going? Over here. If we take one of these eggshell pieces, now I'm pretty sure Unreal is smart enough to do this. If we set it to movable, what I'm worried is that they're all sharing the same pivot point. I want to make sure that they're not simulating physics based on the pivot point, but I'm 99% sure it doesn't do that. Uh, so if we hit play, yeah, it just falls to the ground and it's based on its own uh, center, center point. So that's cool. So what we can do then, is uh, we can add a component. Uh, we're going to type in radial force, and we want that to be in the center, but of course uh, raised up a little bit so that it's kind of in the center of our egg. And uh, we are going to lower this radius to 100, and the impulse strength. So let's this uh, the impulse strength number has to be insanely high. So I'm just going to add two zeros there, and we'll tweak it. 
as needed. And we're going to set all of these. They're movable. Uh, just for now, I'm going to set to simulate physics uh, just for testing. We are going to uh, take our radial force. Whoa, nope. I had too many things selected. <laughs> We're going to make sure we only have our radial force selected. We're going to hold control and left click and drag this out. I'm going to get rid of piece one there for a minute. And uh, we're going to go begin play. This is just testing to see how our, our final hatch result would work. And we're going to go uh, impulse. I'm going to choose fire impulse. Compile, save. And uh, we are going to move this to a position where we can see the egg. Yeah, whoa, those, uh, yeah, that's a strong impulse. Those eggshell pieces went flying. Okay, so back in our radial force, I'm going to knock a zero off. I'll save, go back to our viewport. There we go, That that's a little bit better. It looked like a little bit of force being applied and uh, possibly enough to knock them out. Some of them are getting knocked into the shell though, but that, that, uh, that might change. All right, so you can tweak these values, of course. Uh, you'd probably want to spend more time uh, tweaking the values, but uh, that is good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, get uh, our pieces and we're going to do them in a random order so I'm going to get five and then uh, I am going to uh, set simulate physics set it to simulate and then we're going to uh, let's see here we're going to go custom event I'm going to go fire impulse. And then uh, we are going to go to delay. And we are going to set this delay to, uh, let's see, half a second. And then I'm going to promote that to a variable and 4.26 does this for some reason when you create a variable it opens a new tab I don't know why um, and so you just close it don't worry about it uh, we're gonna call this a delay between uh, breaks and actually Rather than doing that, I'm going to rename this to um, min delay between, uh, actually, delay between breaks min. And then I'm going to duplicate that with control W and call this max. And what we're actually going to do here is go uh, a random float in range uh, so this will be a little bit better uh, and we're going to take our delay min delay max and plug those in there compile and then we can adjust so the maximum will be one second for now, file and save again. All right, so you can tell that I put absolutely no thought preemptively into how I'm putting this together. Uh, that's actually one of the fun things with game design is you kind of just make everything up on the fly, figure it out as you go. Uh, so we might change this and adapt it as uh, we move forward. So what I'm thinking, we could uh, take all of these pieces, we could put them into an array, we could get one at random, uh, tell it to break off, 
and then remove it from the array and then continue looping through until we've got all of our pieces. Um, the difficulty is uh, getting that set up. It's just, it's more than is necessary for right now. Uh, Charlie, what do you think? Do you want me to go through the effort of putting this together so that each of the pieces breaks off uh, in a random order? Or are you okay with every time uh, you hatch it, it pretty much looks the same. It just breaks off pieces in the same order. This tutorial's for you, so you tell me what you'd prefer. But uh, the easier, you're okay with uh, same order. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's the easier way to do it right now. Uh, so essentially what we're going to do is when we run the hatch egg code, it's going to start with piece five. Uh, it's going to set it to simulate physics. It is going to, actually, we're going to move that out there. It's going to fire impulse. And then it's going to delay for a bit. It's going to delay a random amount. So this will, you know, randomize it a bit because the speed at the ha of the hatch. Uh, granted, if we're looking at eight pieces, this means if we're saying that our maximum delay between breaks is one, this means in a worst case scenario, it could take eight seconds for our egg to hatch. So maybe we want to set this down to 0.1 and we want to set this one down to 0.5. So in a worst case scenario, we're looking at a four second hatch. Uh, but then we are going to simply uh, take these two and repeat them. Actually, I'm going to take all of these and repeat them uh, because it's easier that way. And then we're going to do that uh, a bunch more times. This is a really, really uh, not clean way to code this but it works so it's not too much of a big deal this is not something that is really all that important uh, so let's see one two three four five let's just go with those and duplicate them and then I got nine so I can't count. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Did I still get nine? Did I have ten? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Goodbye. All right. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to just drag our pieces. So we've already got five. Let's go with two. Drag that in there. Uh, let's go with eight. Actually, if I was smart, what I would do is I would grab all of these pieces in here. And, uh, well, we don't have to. I was going to control drag, but you don't have to control because you can only get them uh, as components. And then we are going to just pick them at random and plug them in here. And then we are not accidentally getting repeats if you're not paying attention like I tend to do. And we're going to go with three over here and eight. Whack. Drag you. And drag all of these over. These two. These four. Yeah, I mean, ideally, you would probably, to be clean, you would do this as an array, uh, because running this giant frame of uh, code with delays in between is probably not super efficient. Uh, but, again, like I said, functional. And then we don't need a final delay afterwards. So, compile and save. Now, when... We minimize this and go back to our viewport. Uh, 
point. So this is all running off of hatch egg. What we're going to do is choose a begin play just so we can see it go from the beginning. And we're going to call, whoops, hatch. Wait, what? Oh, because I can't spell. I called it hatch egg. So we want H A T C H. <laughs> That's why I can't find my custom event. Hatch. There we go. Not hats. We're not hatching an egg. We're hatching an egg. All right. Uh, so, boom, boom. That's actually all really, really quick. So we're going to take our delay between breaks minimum, and we're going to turn that up to 0.3. And go back here, hit play. You know, the problem is we start too close to the egg. Character's blocking it. And whoops. No, nope. you are not a bad size. There's no such thing as a bad size. Be happy with the size you are. Uh, yeah, okay. So that's breaking open. It's kind of doing it all. Oh, I know why that's happening. Because by default, we've got it set to simulate physics on. So they're all breaking on this first fire. So we want to turn that off. Select all of the pieces. Turn off uh, simulate physics because we're manually turning them all on uh, one at a time. This should work better. More like what I was thinking. So there we go. So now that's giving us a more organic looking break. Rather than all the pieces flying off instantaneously, they're all kind of flying off one at a time. Uh, so then our radial force strength, we can go back in here and adjust it a little bit more. So 10,000, let's change that. Instead of 10, we'll go with 15. Uh, compile, save. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. What do you think, Charlie? Does that look functional? Here, let's, uh, let's turn this into a player character. So we're going to minimize our egg base. We're going to add a camera. No, we're not. We're going to add a spring arm. And we're going to make that, yeah, 300. Let's see. 300. Uh, let's go with 700. And then we're going to add a camera to that. And we're going to add an offset. Let's say 50. No, too high. 50 is the top, so 25. That'll center our camera on the egg. And then uh, actually with our spring arm still selected, target offset, we're going to do 20. No, nope, uh, 50. 100. All right, that's strange. Uh, oh, I think it's because it's scaled up five times. Anyways, that'll give us a little bit of height over our egg. Compile, save. And we are going to... Uh, let's file save all because we haven't done that in a while. We are going to go into our blueprints folder. We are going to, where is it here? Under blueprints, uh, game mode, create, right? Yeah, I'm just going to do it here. Blueprint. Uh, game mode base. There we go. Uh, so dragon. No, it's baby dragon. Game mode. And close that down after we open it because it we don't need the full editor. And for our player character, default pawn, we are going to choose egg. What? Why does that not work? Egg. 
Oh, because I made it an actor. <laughs> so we're going to open up our eggshell under parent class. You see actor. So we are going to reparent blueprint. And we're going to cho choose uh, pawn. So type in pawn, choose pawn. You'll see that becomes a pawn class. Compile, save. We can go back here and under default pawn, we can choose eggshell BP. Compile, save. Then uh, we can minimize that and we can go back into our project settings. Glad you're liking it, Charlie. Glad you're liking it. This is cool. It's a lot of fun. Sorry, I'm making all this up on the fly. So, you know, if I had thought about this a little bit more, I probably uh, could have spent some time preemptively to uh, to figure out how to make an array of all the different shell pieces. But uh, yeah, so the code would be slightly more efficient if you did that. Uh, but this works for prototyping anyways. Uh, so under Maps and Modes, uh, we are going to choose Test World for our Editor Startup Map, Test World for our Default Map, and then the Game Mode, uh, we're going to choose Baby Dragon Game Mode. And uh, close that. Now when we hit Play, uh, you'll see Actually, we can delete that from the world, and uh, our egg is going to spawn and then start to break apart. So, um, what we want to do now is go back to our egg shell, and instead of running this off of begin play, uh, we are probably going to want to, in our project settings, we're going to go under input. We're going to create a new action mapping. Uh, I'm going to hit plus. And the new action mapping name, we're going to choose interact. Uh, and oh, let's just do left mouse button. And close that down. Ah, itchy nose. Always happens during live streams. I'm allergic to being live on camera, apparently. Mm. Excuse me. So, under input, uh, interact. How do we say that? Right click, and you're going to search for input because that's what we just created an input. And then the name of it, uh, this specific input was interact. So you type input interact, and that'll give you your interact key. When pressed, we're going to hatch the egg. Okay, so that's really simple. Uh, then, so now we're going to have it so that when we uh, spawn in the world, it's not going to hatch right away. The next thing we want to do is we want to go into our third person BP, open up the third person character, go over to the event graph, and we are going to steal. Uh, some of this. So we don't need movement as an egg. So we're just going to drag that over there. Uh, we do need gamepad input and we do need mouse input. Wow! This comment box was not big enough. These two here. So select them all, control C. Go back into our eggshell. Now, that is one of the keys to indie game design. You are not a AAA studio. You don't have time to code everything from scratch. So steal liberally. Uh, if it's already been coded by someone else, then uh, absolutely poach that code. Now, of course, uh, when I'm saying this, do it legally. Uh, take the epic code. Don't go into somebody else's project and uh, modify that, unless, of course, you've purchased that content from the marketplace, in which case you are free to do so. Uh, and it's also a great way to learn. Well, theoretically, it's a great way to learn. I've, I've never reverse engineered anything, but uh, 
Yeah, so I'm just going to uh, drag a selection over our giant uh, jumble of code there and uh, hit C on the keyboard to create a comment. And we're going to call this uh, hatch egg. And here, uh, the fire impulse is actually part of hatching the egg. Uh, I just did that so we don't have to duplicate this node every time. Uh, all right, and uh, we are going to, this is input, um, I'm going to call this input interact, And for absolutely no reason whatsoever, other than the fact that I am obsessive compulsive, maybe, uh, I'm going to line these up with the center line on the grid. And I'm going to move my uh, grid over to an empty area, and I'm going to paste, and that will give us our input. And we could probably put this up here somewhere. And uh, now, since we've stolen this from uh, the third person character, we don't have these base turn rate uh, variables. And uh, you can do that because we've copied them over here. If we hit compile, it's actually going to give us an error and tell us that we don't have these variables, so it doesn't know where we're referencing them from. Uh, but if you select them, you right click on them, you'll get create variable uh, with that name. So that's a really quick and easy way uh, to move code from one blueprint to another. Uh, now when we compile and save, we actually have to set our defaults here. Uh, so they were 45 and 45, uh, if I remember correctly, which I'm pretty sure my memory is not that bad. Yes, I remember correctly. All right, so we can close that. We can hit play again, and of course, we don't have any mouse input. Uh, let's see, project settings, input, axis mapping. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Why is that not working? Probably because inside of our eggshell, under our defaults, we need to do yaw. Mm, do we? No, I don't think we do. Why is our... Let's bring back our third person character. Mouse input. That should work, that should work. Um, dum da dum dum. Axis value. We're taking our axis turn. Axis lookup. Why is that not allowing us to control our camera? It should. Camera boom. Uh, maybe we do need to class defaults. Yeah, let's just turn that on. I'll save. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Hit play. There we go. All right. So we can spin our character in the world, and he is spawning at this player's start. Uh, but he is spawning in the air, so that's not useful. Uh, it has been a while since I have made a character from scratch. Probably it would have been smart uh, had we made this from the uh, third person character. Uh, but that's, eh, that's lame because we're not moving. We don't have movement. Uh, let's see. So, how do we 
get this to spawn on the ground. And, oh, oh, it's been too long. So, Charlie, we're getting there. <laughs> but this is the problem with... Uh, and this is actually, so this is funny. We're actually moving our egg around the world, not our camera. Uh, da -da -da -da. I should probably look up how to do a free look. All right, well, when in doubt, Google is your best friend. <laughs> so let's see let's go on youtube see this is another thing uh with game design you will never know everything and uh don't be afraid to go look up tutorials from other people uh so let's go with custom no we're gonna type in ue4 uh custom character third person uh no, we don't want character. We want pawn. Ha uh ha -huh ha. -huh. Uh, pawn. Third person camera. I thought that was the whole point of the third person camera, the camera boom and the follow camera uh, was to allow you to simply rotate in the world. Is there a default spring arm? Ah, there we go. Use pawn control rotation. I think that's it. No, I don't want to install Visual Studio. Ah, ha, ha. there we go. That was the thing I was missing. So uh, we want to back in our, okay, you can go away, third person character. So back in our class defaults, we don't want to use controller rotation, yeah. But on our spring on, we do want use pawn control rotation. And so what that means is our egg will stay planted but our camera can look around. Now, uh, the fact that our egg is spawning up in the air like this is uh, because it's spawning to the center point of our player spawn location. So you could fix that by placing it down on the ground, and then your egg's actually spawning on the ground. Uh, however, there should be a way to tell our egg to fall to the ground first uh so i think if we set simulate physics our egg itself uh let's try this again so, so that's not gonna work huh here's our egg oh i know why that's not gonna work because we are using per poly collision on our egg. So when you're using per poly collision, you cannot have it uh, simulate physics. So uh, what is the workaround? If we, we said simulate physics on our root, I don't think we can. Uh, no. So, oh, finding YouTube links. Free camera, look around player. Yeah, well, <laughs> I figured it out. So thanks, Charlie. I am terrible at looking at the chat here. Uh, it's not something I'm used to. I'm used to uh, creating all of my tutorials on YouTube pre-recorded. So, you know, anytime I run into issues like this, I can pause. I can look up <laughs> how to remember how to do something uh, and then go back. Live is a little bit different, but... It's okay, we figured it out. Um, okay, so yeah, for simplicity's sake, I think just because uh, 
this is uh, going to take a little while. Let's just hit end, and then we move this guy down into the sand a little bit. And that way our, our egg will spawn there. Let's lower it a bit more even. There we go. Then it looks like our egg is actually kind of in the sand. All right, so we've got the ability to uh, look around as our egg. Like uh, in the video you were showing me, Charlie. And uh, if we left click, we play the hatch uh, sequence. So that's pretty cool. Now, how do we actually get our dragon inside there? And the ability to move around as the dragon afterwards. Uh, so what we can do is, and again, because uh, just for simplicity's sake, uh, we're just going to use the third person character. So what we want to do is we want to create uh, basically a place that the character will spawn from. So I'm going to add in an arrow. This is a little trick uh, that I discovered a while ago. So you add in an arrow component, and by default, it's going to put it at the zero location of your actor. Uh, so we're going to move this up. So let's, let's go with 40. We want it up a little bit higher, especially because we had that egg sinking into the ground there. Uh, so that's fine. And uh, that's just going to act as a really easy uh, reference point for spawning our our uh, player. So now uh, what we want to do is we want to go over here and we want to create another custom event. And we're going to call this uh, spawn dragon. Spawn baby dragon. And we are going to type in spawn actor from class. I'm going to plug that in there. We're going to select the class. We're going to type in third for our third person character. And we're going to get the one from the mannequin, not the berries. So that looks like it. And as the spawn transform, we're going to drag out our arrow here. And we're going to go get transform. And we're going to scroll down and we're going to go get world transform. And we're going to plug that in here. And then uh, for the collision handling, we want to try to adjust location, but always spawn. Uh, so that way, if the player is stuck in the ground a little bit, uh, the engine will try and push them slightly a few units in whatever direction needed in order to spawn. And then return value, we are going to P-O-S-S, P-O-S-E-S-S. -S -S. Oh, God. Do I know how to possess? Pause. Pause, pause, pause. I thought I knew how to spell possess. Uh, why is that not working? Let's see. Uh, we want to do that third person character. Let's plug that in there. Huh. Uh, what is it again? On default controller. Do, 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 do. I've done this myself before. It's just, again, been a while. Um, trying to reference what project I did this in. Uh, probably my latest one. 
So I'm going to open up another project. So that's another thing with game design is uh, you will often learn how to do something. Uh, and then weeks, days, months later, uh, forget entirely how you did it. I do that all the time. Uh, so in a previous project, uh, I was spawning NPCs and uh, I... Uh, where was I spawning them from? Probably my gameplay manager here. Uh, let's go to spawn, spawn actor, and then am I not possess, uh, spawn default controller? It is okay. So close that. I'll minimize that in case we need it again. And uh, back in our eggshell, so spawn default controller. And then possessing a pawn. Can we do that? How do you do pawn possession again? My god. Uh, UE4 pawn possession. Changing characters. Hey, game dev man. Welcome You're to now... Polaris, the brightest new addition to Metro Town. Oh god, get out of here. Hello, my name. So let's just skip okay. through all of the Controllable. junk. Forbidden trigger box. We can do something. Well, what we want to set this to be and plug this in over here in the um, third person blueprint. What is now, he doing? Says, and we want to choose the. And now for the array element, is we, we want to get the. Oh man, this is convoluted. Uh, sorry, game dev man, you're making that too complicated. Uh, wah, wah, wah. Possession. Dean, I love Dean actually. He's got there some go. great uh, YouTube go. videos. Right. We're going to say uh, to do is we want to get all actors of class, which is going to generate a big list for. And then okay. what we do. Yeah. Okay. Wait. So, that's what I uh, thought. The ability to, you to just the possess. The Why there, am I uh, not able to find possess? Sounds good. Yeah. Now, what we're going to say is getting that character component. And what we're going to do is drag out from box. Setting the world location. Yeah, possess. that's fine. And Why is possess not working for me? I thought I was doing it right. Uh, all right. P O O S. So we've got possess. Target is controller, right? In pawn, possess. Why didn't that work? P O S E S S. That's so weird. And yet, possess is here. All right. Uh, why is that not working? The pawn. Because that's a player character. Oh, uh, maybe I should have left. Okay, what's going on? So get all actors of class, third person character, or each. Ah, uh, no. Oh, we should be able to test this out. So if we were to run up to this guy and press E, we now control half the window. Press E with the window control doesn't work. Okay. Plug it through in, and then we plug the array into the form. 
And then when you do, you need to make sure we're positioning from the right player. So we go to get player. Ah, that's what I'm missing. So we want to go get player. Uh, character, I think. No. Uh, controller. Controller. Aha. Let's go back to get player controller. Yeah, where where's the possess? That's so weird. Target that in there. A bile. Save. All right. So after hatch has happened, we are going to uh, spawn. No, we actually probably want our spawn to happen at the beginning but we want the possess to happen at different time so we are going to break that off and we are going to take this spawn the default controller and promote this to a variable and we're going to call this uh Mm, let's just call it playable character. Oh, of course. Stupid glitch. Uh, new uh, variable. Call this uh, spawned player character. Oops. Control drag, drag this in there. So we've got our spawned character. Then we're going to spawn the default controller for it. Uh, whoops. So that I can just plug in there. And then we are going to over here custom. We're going to call this. Uh, Possess character, you know, without that little apostrophe. Okay, so after our hatch sequence, we can possess character. Let's see if this works. So hit play. We've got our egg. We can spin around, we left click, oh, 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 of course. <laughs> I want to do that on begin play. We want to spawn baby dragon, plug that in there. There we go. Compile, save, minimize, hit play. Oh, we're 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 already possessed. Oh, that's interesting. We're inside the egg now. Well, that was an accident. <laughs> A fun accident, but it's an accident. Why is he possessing already? Probably is it because I'm spawning the default controller? So if I turn that off, I think I was using that because it was an AI and I wanted it to automatically be possessed by a controller. Why does it keep asking me to do? Yes. Okay, so, so now we have our egg. Let's, let's cross our fingers and hope this works. So now we have our egg. We can left click to start the process of breaking out. And there's our player who has spawned waist deep is he spawned waist deep in the world? Oh, that's fantastic. So if you hit F8 and we zoom in here. So we can't move our player because he spawned waist deep. So uh, what we're going to have to do is, uh, let's see. So first of all, we can, where did our player start go? 
So we can take our eggshell BP and we can grab our player start location, copy that, and we can paste this to be in that spot. Then we're going to fly into our eggshell here and we're going to see if our arrow, so our arrow is, I was correct, it's uh, up high enough, so our arrow is not intersecting with the ground. So don't have to worry about that. Then uh, what we want to do is when we spawn uh, at the arrow, we want to, uh, let's go get transform, and then we're going to right click and split struct. And we're going to get the location and we're going to hit plus. We're going to go uh, vector plus vector. We're going to add 90 units. Uh, this is in the case of the character, so he's 90 units uh, tall. And we are going to split the struct pin here. We're going to plug that into our location. We're going to plug that into our rotation and leave the scale at one actually. Uh, so that should, let's double click there, that should clean it up. And let's see, why are we, why are we spawning as him again? Why does that happen? Uh, we didn't possess the character yet. So why is that? So we don't need to spawn the default controller. Why is that changing? Because we haven't actually possessed him yet. Why is it doing that by default? It seems like it's random. Like It seems like it was randomly choosing either the egg or the player. What did I change? Spawn baby dragon. So let's see if I turn that off. And hit play. Where the egg? So Uh, cool. Why is, why is, uh, why is it automatically taking control of this? It shouldn't. We shouldn't possess it until we tell it to possess it. Uh, all right. Somebody else joining the stream shortly? Uh, um, 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 um. So we're telling it to possess the character after the hatch, but it's possessing the character before the hatch. All right, well, let's, of course, it's not going to be able to do that then. Let's see if I plug this in here. I'll save. So we are the egg. We left click and we're instantly inside the egg. Uh, all right. And we we can't even use our third person character. So we got to find a, a better tutorial on pawn possession. It's not doing six different pawns. Well, let's we see. I love how like tutorials I do this I'm totally notorious at this but you're trying to create a tutorial on one subject and you show how to do a thousand other things <laughs> uh, that's the benefit of uh, paid programs paid tutorials I mean they're a little bit more structured <laughs> Control, and the 
match. And then we can say rectangle in. There we are. And it's an apple, it's an array, it's a box here, it's multiple squares, it's an array. What we can do with this is because it's the only one we have. Now, the array index is a number, so we can, we can call the variable array instead of an edge. Okay? So the array end is the one. And then what we need to do is we need to make sure we're processing from the right player. So we're going to get player controller and plug this into the target. There we are. And then we'll press compile. And we should be able to test this out. So to run the guy, we we never control our screen. Now, we're taking the screen guy control, doesn't do anything, so we can't really jump down, and we can't get back to a real jacket. So we're going to test Let's Very that. interesting. So I'm trying to understand why that's not working because we're essentially we're doing the same thing. We've got our actor. We're not getting an array because we only have one. And oops, so it kind of moves that around like it's uh, from the right player. So we're going to get player controller. Yeah, player controller, plug, into plug that into target, and in pawn. That's very weird. Yeah, we're doing essentially the same thing, so I don't know why it's not letting us. This is more fun with game design, is debugging and figuring out why the hell your code isn't working. Uh, so we have spawn our baby dragon we're spawning actor third person character okay so what i'm gonna do is for simplicity's sake so i'm gonna take our third person character here and i am going to Maybe not simplicity's sake, but just to be sure, I'm going to drag it over to our blueprints. I'm going to choose copy here. And in our blueprints, I'm going to rename this to baby dragon character. Just because there are so many third person characters inside of our uh, content folder now because of the different uh, asset packs we've added in. I want to make sure that we're using our own unique uh, baby dragon character. Uh, so what we can do is uh, instead of eggshell, I'm going to choose baby dragon character, file and save. And uh, where is, no, that's fine. If I double click on our player start, and we let's just copy that location but we place that up in the world and hit play this is our baby dragon character according to the game all right and if we put that back down where it was and we go back into our shell here we're going to find our baby dragon character so now we're going to spawn a baby dragon character. We are going to get rid of our variable because it's specific. That was a variable of a different class type. So now we're going to return this and promote this to a uh, stupid glitch. Uh, baby dragon character ref. For reference, so we're going to spawn our baby dragon character. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Target is in pawn. That's why it wasn't working. I never actually connected this up. So, <laughs> so uh, we are telling it to possess something, but we were never telling it what to possess. I think that's why it didn't work here. So this should work. Ah. Uh, no, it's not going to work because we're still spawning uh, in the ground because of where our player start location is. And uh, edit project settings. No, we don't need project settings. We need, we need, we need blueprints, game mode. This is going to go back to eggshell. Compile, save, then back in our eggshell, we are going to make sure that we spawn our baby dragon. 
uh, on begin play, but now he shouldn't be possessed. Okay, ultimate fingers crossed. Hit play. We're still... <laughs> oh god, this is like purgatory. We're stuck in hell. Uh... That's so funny that it, when it's... Uh... So why is it doing that? Why is it possessing him right away? Uh, in the world setting, you can set whatever character spawn as. No, thank you, Green Coke. Uh, that was not what I'm looking for. I'm having an issue, uh, and my apologies. I am uh, terrible at noticing chat, guys. Uh, so my apologies if your question's been hanging out there for a while. Uh, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to possess. So we're switching between two uh, player pawns, player characters. Uh, so we've got our dragon egg uh, character, which is right here. You can see uh, it's just an egg that we have the ability to pivot around. And when we left click, uh, the egg shell breaks open. And inside is going to be our new baby dragon uh, player character. So what we're trying to do in the code here, uh, on begin play, I was trying to have it spawn the actual character that we want to possess, but not actually possess it until I run the possess character uh, command. And uh, so for whatever reason, if we spawn the third person character right away, uh, with our uh, begin play, Spawn Baby Dragon, it's instantly taking possession of it. I, I've never seen that happen. I didn't know why. Uh, unless something inside our third person character is saying like auto receive, auto possess AI, disable. There we go, maybe that's why, so. Uh, okay, back in our egg. Compile and save that. Maybe that's why it was happening, because, no. So, yeah, so, so this is what I'm stuck with. For some reason, I mean, it's cool to be inside the egg. Uh, and we can still left-click and break it. And we can come out. I mean, so that's cool. Uh, <laughs> but it's not exactly what we were going for. It's weird uh, that it's not letting us be the egg first and then possess later. Uh, and I thought I had solved that by finding out that our baby dragon character was auto-possessing player. Uh, egg... Default, auto possess. Maybe we need to de disable that. Um, and I'm just going to disable this for a second. Debugging is fun. So, okay, so that's our, that's our egg. We're not telling it to auto possess anything. Uh, as I look down to chat to see if maybe Green Coke knows how to fix this problem. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know why it's automatically possessing that character. Uh, when I hit play, we should be in our outside camera, not in our inside camera. And the other thing that's strange is the fact that Right now, we're still supposedly controlling the egg because if we weren't controlling the egg, I wouldn't be able to left click and break out of the shell. Um, and then now that we've broken out of the shell, we can run around as our quote unquote baby dragon. Hey, no, uh, Charlie, it's it's fun. This is part of game design like i love the fact that you requested this this is perfect especially for my first stream like to have 
pre-planned content to go into. That is awesome. Um, but no, this is, this is, to be honest, this is part of game design. This is what I wanted my channel to be about. That's why it's called Indie Game Dev Live. Uh, you get to see all of the screw-ups, all of the weirdness. Uh, you don't just get the clean, uh, edited, everything figured out, uh, put together process. Now, the strange thing is, I've looked at, uh, Two different tutorials on how to possess the character and uh yeah i mean this 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 is the thing that's driving me nuts is this should be working we shouldn't possess the character until we actually run the possess code and i thought i totally thought that was going to be at the auto possess um Auto possess player. I totally thought that was going to be it because that, in my mind, made sense. Is if the game was automatically possessing the player, and as soon as we spawn it, ah, Thalo, thanks for joining. Have a good night, man. You must have been up late if you're going to bed at 6 p.m. Uh, hope you sleep well, bud. Um, yeah, this uh. This is weird. This is not something that should be happening because we're not possessing them until this point. Okay. So, okay, let's let's go through let's do our debugging. So, print string uh player possess We're going to Plug that in there, and we're going to set that to 15 seconds. We're going to put that there. And we're going to copy this. And we're going to choose, let's see, let's put it over here. And we're going to plug that in there. And we're going to change the text color to yellow. And we're going to choose, choose type player. Uh, well, let's do it. Baby dragon character spawned. Ah, yeah, they, your view totally counts. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't need a ton of activity in the chat. I am having a hard time paying attention to it anyways. Uh, but, so baby dragon character spawned. And we already know that stuff's working, so we don't have to worry about it. And yeah, so on event begin play, we should just be spawning the baby dragon, running that. Then when we run the hatch egg code, we shouldn't actually possess the player character until then. Now, um, maybe under my eggshell, maybe I want it to auto possess player. Uh, we'll leave that for a minute. Okay. So let's look at debugging. I, I don't know why it keeps telling me to install Visual Studio. No, get lost. This is Blueprint. <laughs> we don't need. Okay, baby dragon character spawned. See, you notice how our code for possessing him has not... So maybe for some reason it's struggling with the camera maybe the camera is automatically activated maybe the camera is automatically activated and set as our default camera when you spawn the third person character or the baby dragon character so uh what i want to do then is cuz yeah if you have two if you have two cameras, like a first-person camera and a third-person camera in your 
single character. See, I've never actually done this before. I've never had a need in my game to switch between characters. Uh, so this is really cool to try and figure out on the fly. But uh, I have had it where you're switching between a first person and a third person camera. So if you have two cameras, uh, by default, I know the engine is going to pick one of them to use. So that might actually be what's happening. So I'm going to try this. We're going to do a custom event again. And we're going to call this uh, set uh, egg camera as default. So we are going to grab this camera and set active. Yeah, that is it. And we're going to tell it to be active. And then we are going to uh, set egg that camera as default. And we're going to delay by a fraction 0.2. Then we're going to spawn our baby dragon. Uh, and hopefully this will work. Otherwise, We'll change the order of these two. Um, okay, so that didn't work. But now, if we spawn our baby dragon and then immediately set the egg camera as the default, and do we have to deactivate the camera of... See, I didn't think this would work. I didn't think it would allow you to switch between so we're gonna have to get our baby dragon character reference we're going to have to get the camera get the follow camera we're gonna have to uh, deactivate the uh, so we're going to have to set our egg camera as the default and then deactivate our follow camera. Uh, in the game mode, you spawn as the egg. Yes. I just try and set the egg to auto-possess player zero. Yeah, I thought that too. Uh, but it didn't. we had it on before and it didn't seem to work. Um, so... Yeah, I gotta go with this and see if this. See, that is really weird. It's not fixing it either. Uh, so typically, when you're switching between cameras, you activate the camera that you want, and then you deactivate <laughs> the other camera. Hmm. So if we go into our class defaults. We tell this to auto possess player zero, compile and save, and our baby dragon character's auto possess is disabled. You would think that would be enough, but see, it's not. And that is really, truly stumping me. I don't know why that's happening. If we have two characters in the world, or if we're spawning a character into the world, uh, okay. So, uh, I have a new approach then. I, instead of doing this, instead of doing this, what I got to do is we're going to we're going to add in a mesh. Uh, let's do skeletal mesh. And we're going to call this uh, Baby Dragon Placeholder. Okay. And uh, there, no, it's Mannequin. Mannequin. How many times is he in here? Game Mannequin. That's the one we want. Okay. Uh, we are going to place him at 40. Whoa, no. All right, because that's before the, the five times scale is added. 
Uh, hmm. Maybe seven. Okay. This is going to be. <laughs> this is because I'm pissed off that this isn't working, and I'm going to follow up with this next week. Uh, so, Charlie, this is going to allow me to figure out why the hell uh, spawning and possessing isn't working. Um, yeah, but you can totally spawn as a pawn. Like, I, I've made other games, like spaceship games and stuff where you can spawn as a pawn. pawn. Uh, I've made a game where you can spawn as a marble. So that, yeah, this is something I need to look into a little bit more. So for now, what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to have a character already in there. We're going to have our, our placeholder character. Compile and save. Then, uh, and, and this is going to be a fun workaround. So <laughs> while you're prototyping, uh, you can always, you know, implement workarounds like this. And then, uh, and then tweak it as you go, uh, especially if you're just trying to sell a point. So then we've got possessed character. So what we want to do then is uh, after we spawn our character, we can then call possess character. And uh, when we uh finish hatching we're gonna run some code okay so this is our code to spawn a baby dragon and that is a code to possess the character so select around that spawn baby dragon player character this should work this should really work if this doesn't work I am going to quit game design altogether. No, I'm totally kidding. But this kind of stuff drives me nuts. When you when you get into game design and you know something should work and it doesn't, it's always like, ah, oh, so infuriating. So, but I mean, it's, it's part of why I love game design. It's a challenge, figuring out how to fix the problem, uh, how to approach it. No, we're not going to autosave. Get out of here. Go away. Okay, so this is going to be uh, the spawn character. And then, uh, so before that, uh, we are going to custom event. And we're going to call this uh, hide uh, baby dragon placeholder so we're gonna take our baby dragon placeholder and we're gonna simply set visibility on our baby dragon placeholder to no which is unchecked by default and then Call that hide placeholder mesh. Okay, so after hatching, we're gonna run uh, spawn baby dragon and immediately hide placeholder dragon. So that should work like over a single frame. And then we're going to possess Although, not that seemingly we even need to possess the character since it seems to be happening automatically. But, all right. So, what this is going to do is uh, basically give us, if we hide any of these pieces here, uh, where is the hide, 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 visible? Okay, so we're going to have our baby dragon uh you know just doing playing his idle animation inside of our egg uh and then 
yeah, we're basically just going to spawn in the new one and hide this one uh, at the exact same time. Uh, so that way it will, should seamlessly look like, uh, yeah, we're taking control of the character here. Oh, that's the wrong project. Uh, back over here. So now we hit play. We have our dragon egg. Looking good. We've had this for a while. We are going to left click. And we see our baby dragon, and then boom, we <laughs> take control of the baby dragon. Uh, so maybe we want to put a bit of a delay in there before we get control. Uh, so after hatching, delay, and we're going to give this the delay of. I don't know, three seconds. You're going to always promote your uh, delays to a variable. You don't want magic numbers uh, in it. You want to be able to have control over it afterwards. Uh, easily tweak the values. So uh, delay uh, before control. Uh, and then you can also give a tool tip. Uh, delay in seconds before, uh, after egg hatches before uh, player is given control of the baby dragon. All right, compile, save. Put that down there. Minimize. Now. This, this is getting close to final product. Charlie, I hope you're liking it. Uh, so we are going to hit our hatch button. Everything breaks. One, two, three. Now we take control. And uh, we can jump out of our egg. <laughs> All righty. So I, I think that works well enough for me. I'm going to try it one more time. What do you guys think, chat? Yeah, looks great. Okay, awesome. Uh, I'm happy. It's a good workaround. So, left click. Boom. Well, wow, that's a little glitchy because he's stepping on the physics pieces. Uh, but, yeah, there you go. So, uh, with those physics pieces, what we could do to fix that, and we don't need my other project anymore, so what we could do to fix that, excuse me, is uh, just select all of our pieces. And under collision, so by default it's set to block all dynamic, we're going to choose custom. And uh, we're going to choose ignore pawn. Uh, and that should fix that. So that way... It won't be, they won't be uh, colliding with the player character. So there's our egg hatching. Three, two, one. Boom. I, I don't like that the boom camera is automatically down there. It, I mean, it's in, it's trying to block, it's being blocked by the, uh, the egg itself. So you get a nice shot of the Unreal Mannequin's ass. Uh, but... I would like it better if it was a seamless transition between the two, if the camera could be up higher. Uh, but yeah, we'll work on this. This is something I think uh, could definitely be improved upon. All right, guys. So I think we're going to call that it. Uh, we've been streaming for two and a half hours, so a longer than I originally anticipated. But thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I think next week I'm going to continue this. So uh, we're actually going to go into once our baby dragon is uh, spawned, uh, we're going to give him the ability to eat, uh, you know, some things in the world and then grow up into a big mature dragon. Uh, and maybe I'll put together uh, some more practice examples <laughs> during the week. 
uh, so that it can be a little bit more seamless because, uh, yeah, uh, this has definitely been rough, but uh, yeah, hopefully fun. Uh, so yeah, guys, thanks so much for joining the stream and uh, I will see you all uh, next week, hopefully. Have a great night. Bye all.